friends and i welcome you all on the google cloud train i hope you have climbed in strapped on your seat belts today we're going to create our own first virtual machine on the google cloud platform it's fairly simple fairly easy and fairly quick and for all you cloud engineers out there it is the best thing we have so this is our google cloud console that we all will work with and the first thing i'll do is i'll navigate to the compute engine vm instance page and start creating my instance so i go to the navigation menu that you all know is on the top left and then i scroll down to the option compute engine and then we're going to get ahead with creating our first vm instance so i go to compute engine and then i click on the vm instances option notice that there's no instance in my google cloud project as of now so i'll click on create and it'll take me to certain options that I can select and I can go ahead with instance creation. So the first thing is the name. I'll name it as first instance and since capital uppercase letters are not allowed, if I use an uppercase letter, it will going to throw me an error. You can use labels. You can use labels and labels majorly help you to organize and manage your resources and on an enterprise level, labels are very handy next you select a region so there are quite a few regions in asia pacific europe and america uh, divisions and uh, each has four availability zones or we call data centers and uh, next if you scroll down there's the machine configuration which is essentially uh, what kind of performance you're expecting from your virtual machine instance there are multiple series n1 e2 n2 and all of these are different combinations of vcpus and memories um, depending on your requirements and whatever so this option is called container so if you want to run a docker container or if you want to start your instance containing a docker itself um, for example if i want to run a container for a redmine application i would click on the deploy container option and i will pass the public docker hub url for that particular container and when i start my instance on the google vm it is going to start with that container although we are not going to get into the details of containerization as of now um, the next which is the most important part is the operating system disk or the boot disk of the system so if i click on change here it will give me some public images that are available to use for everyone you can create your instance using custom images that you have created you can use snapshots to launch your instances and you can use existing disks i will use the public image for red hat so notice all the operating system providers the major ones are here along with a second option to select the version and then you can select the boot disk type i'm going to select as 10 gb you can have uh, whatever size pleases you and uh, then there are certain options like identify an api access so if you want to allow default access or you want to uh, give access to the particular uh, apis or control that access this is the way you do it then there's an option called firewall if it is a web server if you're running an application which is web based on this particular instance you you're going to need to allow http traffic and if you want to have SSL authentication or SSL certificate authentication, you are going to need allow HTTPS traffic. If I scroll down to this option called management security disks, networking and sole tenancy, it gives me more advanced options on managing my instance. Uh, we are not going to get into the details of this, but in my next video, I'll show you how to add an SSH key of your own to your Google VM. You can add uh, multiple disks to your instance and you can also add your third party key management service if you don't want to use a google managed key networking allows you to change your network interface if you want to assign it your own ip address you want to give it a host name and network tags so network tags in an is an important concept which we are going to cover in detail but i'll only tell you that each instance we should have a network tag if you want to assign specific firewall rules to that instance. So firewall rules only recognize network tags, not the instances individually. So after completing all this, um, we are going to click on create. 
lot of these options will be explained later on. Normally I'll pause the video because instance creation takes time, but in Google cloud, it takes less than 10 seconds to create the instance. So we're just going to wait and hover here for a while. And then the next time I click refresh, I hope the instance will be uh, up and running. So yes, it is. It is an internal IP, an external IP connectable instance. And um, so Google Cloud has this one functionality where you do not need a third party app like an, like a putty or any simulator to connect to your instance. You can, uh, Google directly provides you a way to connect to your instance using the Google Cloud shell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on connect SSH here and um, it will straight away take me to my instance and Google Cloud does all the hard work of transferring the key pairs, the SSH pairs to my instance so that I do not have to do that uh, access management stuff. So yeah. there you go. I'm able to connect to my instance. I'm just gonna run some sample commands to see that I have full control over the system. And if I see if I have root access or not, Sorry guys, my typing is lousy. Yeah, so I have root access to the system. So I do not need to use any third party tool. Thank you guys, this was my video. I hope you enjoyed the next one as well. <laughs> Goodbye guys, thank you.